Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. So, I've got this exciting uh, new deal from Rogers that uh, I just had to jump on. Uh, it's their ultimate plan. It's only $45 a month with the discount. It comes with a whopping 1,000 gigabytes of data per month, plus download speeds up to 500 megabits per second on 5G and uploads up to 10 megabits per second. That's what hooked me right away. I mean, who wouldn't want that kind of boost for home internet? Right now I'm paying $50 a month for just 500 gigabytes on my old plan. And my speeds are around 100 megabits per second on paper. But in real life, it's more like 20 to 30 mega megabits per second. So for just $5 less, I'm doubling my data and getting way faster downloads. Sign me up. It felt like a no-brainer. And I figured it would be perfect to test out this new setup. Let's dive in and unbox it. This is the Nokia FastMile Gateway 12. It's their latest Wi-Fi 7 gateway. And when I called Rogers, they said if I want this plan, this is the only device option. Even for their lower 600 gigabyte plan, uh, it's still this one uh, because it's got that Wi-Fi 7 tech. Honestly, I don't even have devices that support Wi-Fi 7 yet. Um, most of my stuff is older, but hey, they insisted it's the way to go. I, I was kind of bummed because I love my current Vantiva Cobra 5G Xtreme Gateway. It's been solid. But you know what? This is a great chance to compare the two side by side. Both are 5G home internet modems, and at first glance, they look pretty similar. Eight antennas inside each for strong signals. But let's talk looks. The Nokia is slimmer and sleeker, like it's trying to be all modern and minimalist. I like the white color. It feels light and premium. It sits nicely on a table or by the window without taking up much space. The Vantiva's a bit bulkier, but it's got more ports. 5 Ethernet ports versus the Nokia's 3 plus a USB-C on the Nokia. The Vantiva has USB-A. Personally, I don't need all those ports, so no big deal for me. Inside, the Nokia's got a newer Qualcomm Snapdragon X72 chip, which is basically the brain of the thing, released in 2023. More energy efficient and supports fancier 5G features for better signal tweaking. The Vantiva runs on the Snapdragon X65 from 2021, still solid but a step behind. The Nokia is very light and got one light indicator on the front, while the, the Vantiva has lights front and back. Now flipping through the quick start guide, it has four easy steps. Download the Nokia Wi-Fi app or log in at 192.168.1.1 with the credentials on the bottom. Oh, and get this. On its user manual, it says, for indoor use only. And then, the manual warns, do not install, use, or service this product during a thunderstorm. There's a remote risk of electric shock from lightning. So, don't get zapped while streaming Netflix. Stay safe out there, folks. Inserting the SIM card was straightforward. Pop off the cover, slide it in, chip facing out, click it back. Rogers sent a new SIM with this plan. They said, I can't use my old one for the promo. And it's already activated. So this means I now have uh, two active 5G lines from Rogers. My old Vantiva on the 500 gigabyte plan and this new Nokia. Perfect for side-by-side -side testing. But to power it on, there's a button in the back. Press it. And the light starts flashing blue first, then cycles to yellow and then green. Uh, yellow means LTE or 4G, green for 5G or 5G plus. Mine went through some colors, blue, red blinking, and then solid yellow. The Vantiva's blue light popped on quick, signaling 5G connection right away. Placed them both by the window, and interestingly, the Nokia stuck on yellow 4G while the Vantiva grabbed 5G Made me wonder whether the Nokia's reception is a bit weaker. 
but we'll test that. Speed test time. First on the Vantiva using speedtest.net. I got about 74 megabits per second down and 4 to 5 megabits per second up. Solid, but nothing crazy. Matches what I've seen over the past year. Let me run a second test here to double check. Switch to another Nokia. Whoa, huge jump. 216 megabits per second down and 10 to 12 megabits per second up. That's like triple the download and double the upload. Test it again. Consistent. To check real-world use, I downloaded a big AI model, the new GPTO SS20B, which is supposed to be a powerhouse for reasoning tasks from OpenAI. On the Nokia, it flew at 45 to 50 megabytes per second. Super quick for streaming or multiple devices like kids on YouTube while I'm in a meeting. Switch back to Vantiva. only about 10 megabytes per second, way slower, like one-fifth the speed. So yeah, the Nokia crushes it when connected, but here's the trap. After a week of testing, I've noticed some issues. The Nokia's Wi-Fi range is shorter. In my backyard, about 25 meters away, the signal gets weak fast, unlike the Vantiva's rock-solid coverage. And the big issue, Frequent Wi-Fi drops. Not always the cellular side. Uh, the light stays solid green, good 5G. But the Wi-Fi just disconnects randomly, sometimes three times, in a 45-minute Teams meeting. Super frustrating, and it's a deal breaker for work. It happened every day. The 5G cellular connection also dropped a couple times in the past week, but less frequent than the Wi-Fi connection. The Ventiva just way more stable overall. Better Wi-Fi range, no drops, and uh, consistent 5G connection. Nokia has faster internet speed when it works due to the ultimate plan, but Ventiva's reliability wins for me. I've tried fixes, like checking for firmware updates, as I feel the issue might be caused by the firmware glitch but the Nokia's application only has firmware update schedule setting, while the local network setting doesn't have the manual firmware the, uh, update option neither. It seems the firmware update might be carrier push only. I'll contact Roger's technical support for another new device to test or a firmware update. If this frequent Wi-Fi disconnection issue is not fixed, I wouldn't recommend this new Nokia FastMile 5G Gateway 12 device to anyone. I will keep both devices for at least three weeks to compare fully, worth the extra cost for a fair test. Stay tuned for updates and in my next video, I'll share how I worked around those Wi-Fi drops. If you've got one of these, drop your experiences in the comments. Like and subscribe for more Real Talk reviews. Thanks for watching.